Hello, my name is Dr. Sophia Davidson and I'm from WeHi and I'm going to tell you about our recent publication in the Journal of Experimental Medicine, Dominant Negative Otulin Related Autoinflammatory Syndrome. So this story starts with two patients who presented with a series of inflammatory symptoms, including severe necrotizing wounds which failed to heal. Genetic testing revealed that both patients had a heterozygous de novo variant in the gene otulin, resulting in a missense change from a cysteine to a serine at position 129. And we thought it was likely that this, this was a disease-causing variant because otulin is one of only two D ubiquinases in the cell able to cleave linear ubiquitin chains. Now, linear ubiquitin chains are important for a lot of different processes in, cell, in the cell, including the stabilization of the TNF receptor signaling complex. The E3 ligase complex LUBAC ubiquitinates a TNF receptor signaling complex upon TNF engagement with its receptor to promote NF-kappa B-driven signaling and inhibit TNF-induced cell death. Furthermore, Biallelic loss of function mutations in otulin result in otulin-related autoinflammatory syndrome, or ORAS, which has a remarkably similar clinical phenotype as what we observe in our patients. Consistent with ORAS at a molecular level, we see accumulation of linear ubiquitin chains in patient fibroblasts and increased inflammatory gene transcription in patient PVMCs. However, our patients are heterozygous, and previous work by the Casanova lab found heterozygous loss of function mutations in otulin are not sufficient to drive spontaneous inflammation. But we thought perhaps our variant might be a bit different. Indeed, exogenous expression, exogenous expression of C129S and not other loss of function mutations in otulin was sufficient to drive accumulation of linear ubiquitin chains and inflammatory gene transcription in wild type cells. So how is C129S otulin actively driving disease? Well, this change from a cysteine to a serine doesn't affect protein stability, but it does entirely ablate otulin's ubiquinase activity. So we found that in patient cells, about 50% of otulin was inactive. So how does this inactive otulin actually drive disease? Well, along with ubiquinating various other substrates, Lubac also auto-ubiquinates itself, and otulin is absolutely required to regulate this. We found that in patient cells, C129S otulin, preferentially bound to Lubac, outcompeting out -competing wild type otulin and promoting the accumulation of ubiquitin on Lubac. This inhibited Lubac's ability to, re, to be recruited to the TNF receptor signaling complex and sensitized cells to, cell, to TNF induced cell death, leading to patient disease. Indeed, Blockade of TNF signaling resulted in disease remission for both of our patients, and just to emphasize how dramatic this was, here is patient one's severe necrotizing wound, fully healed. He's been re-established on feeds and he's growing really well, so it's a fantastic result. Thank you so much for listening, and please check out our paper. It's the first report of an ORADS-like disease caused by dominant negative inheritance.